right. Hello and welcome back to Microbellum Live. We are broadcasting to you today uh, from Southern Oregon, the headquarters of Microbellum Software. And we are glad that you are here with us today, that you took time out of your busy schedule to join in on our conversation. We took a short break uh, a bit ago over the summer, but we are happy to be back here with a lineup to last through uh, the end of the year and beyond. So today we have lined up a great topic uh, to discuss. We're gonna be talking about the Leica 3D Disto Laser. And here with us uh, live from the New York area is Adam Dierig. Adam, thanks for being here with us today. Glad to be here. Awesome. And uh, here to talk about how he has benefited from the Disto Laser with, uh, uh, with his Microbellum software is Zach Dees, owner of Dees Millwork in Alabama. Thank you so much too, Zach, for being here and joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, so whether you are a user of Microbellum software or not, or uh, we're gonna be covering some great information to help you decide if digital templating is right for your business. Uh, we're gonna see uh, the laser and you're gonna get a feel for the software, uh, the workflow from the initial scan um, to using those scans within projects. But before we get started with that and turn things over to Adam, I wanted to review how today's episode is going to work. Uh, your mics have been muted. Uh, but we do want to hear from you. So uh, to be sure to use the question and answer tool found uh, by clicking the green Q&A button at the bottom center of your screen, that's gonna open up the dialogue box where you can communicate with the question and answer form. Uh, we have text working behind the scenes to make sure all your questions are answered. And we also have a chat feature here available uh, that we use for running commentary and feedback as we go, go along this next hour or so. So give us a shout out there to let us know where you're tuning in from today. So whether you're using the, uh, uh, the Zoom webinar here, you're joining us on that platform, or you are tuning in from our YouTube live stream, uh, remember you can ask a question at any time and we may even get Adam to answer the question live for you. All right then, well let's uh, get right into it and we're gonna turn things over to Adam as he develops the topic of digitizing the physical world using the Leica 3D Disto Laser. All right, thanks, Clay. I'm I'm happy to have the opportunity to be back here. Uh, we were actually uh, we did a, another live event last December about the 3D Disto, and and that worked out really well. And I'm glad to bring it back again. And 3D laser scanning is is not just something that I like to talk about. It's really a, a passion of mine. I enjoy doing it, um, and I enjoy talking about it because it's really changed the way that I work. Um, and so hopefully this will just help you to get a little bit of an understanding of how this tool works and what exactly you would be dealing with after you scan something and you export it into the microvellum environment. Uh, so I have a quick slide to just kind of give you an idea of what the tool is. And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this, you know, in trade shows and uh, in other events. But basically this is called the Leica 3D Disto. And Leica is one of the first companies that came out, it is the first company that came out with laser scanning technology. Uh, 25 years ago, we're coming up on an anniversary for that. And the 3D Disto came out about six years ago and it has been one of the industry standards when it comes to capturing measurements and exporting them to a CAD environment. Um, so this is just a, a basic idea of what comes with the unit. Uh, and then I have some examples uh, of some things that I have scanned using the 3D Disto and, and what they look like. I always like to show people, you know, kind of the end result. It, it's fun to look at the software and, and see what's going on there. But if you don't really understand what you're going to get in the end, uh, in my mind, sometimes it's hard to visualize things. So these were just a few scans uh, that I captured for a wall paneling project. Um, this was a room scan. I just wanted to basically see if the walls were out of plumb and out of square. And same with this. This was a, I call this the toilet bowl room because uh, it's shaped like a toilet bowl. Uh, but I wanted to scan this room because it was getting paneling. And all the paneling, of course, was mitered. So everybody, everything had to be extremely accurate when it came to the mitering side of things. Here's just a few other scans. And we're gonna look at these uh, in the microvellum CAD environment a little bit later. But this was a, 
an area that we wanted to figure out it was a mezzanine and we needed to do paneling on that. And then this last picture is um, just a stair, a helical staircase. It was seven stories all, all together. And it was actually a customer that had purchased a 3D Disto from us and he called me and said, hey Adam, I know I bought this from you, but I, I need some help. So could you come and help me? So we helped him with this uh, and it worked out really well. So I just wanna go over what exactly the 3D Disto is. Um, the 3D Disto, it is a, I call it a precision point cloud scanner. There's a lot of point cloud scanners out there now that they've been coming out with, which is something like this, the Leica VLK360. I'm sure if you haven't heard about it, it there's been a buzz um, in the work industry and in all the industries of this, of this really cool, small, sleek looking high tech scanner. And the difference in this is this is a high resolution. So you can see it's given me quite a lot of information uh, versus some of this information that we were looking at just a second ago. But the problem that I have with this high resolution scanner is you have all that information to sort through. So uh, we've done a lot of testing between this and the 3D Disto and we found that the 3D Disto comes out much more on top because it's easier to, to manipulate with the data. Some of the things that you can do with a 3D Disto um, is as simple as countertop scribing. This was a room that we scribed uh, and, and ended with a countertop that we then cut on the CNC machine and it was scribed into place. Um, and there's other things, those room scans. Some of the misconceptions out there, and I, I wanted to touch on this because in the last couple of trade shows we've done, uh, we've heard a lot of people say, hey, you know, does this integrate with cabinet vision? Does this integrate with other softwares? And it does, but there's some issues with that. And, and this is why I personally like the microvellum side of things, because you can, you can set up a very good workflow uh, versus the other softwares that just import. And what my workflow is, is I scan the real world which is out of square and out of plumb and out of level. And then I take that scan and I work it through uh, a series of steps, which we'll go over in a little bit. And I come up with all the pinch points. So how am I going to, you know, our millwork that we create, the millwork that we create is going to be square. It's going to be true. It's not going to be at these funky angles. We need to account for that. So I, I go through and I count for that and I come up with my final uh, layout, which is square and nice, but I know when I install it, everything's gonna fit versus other softwares where they just import directly into the software and you're getting walls that are out of square and out of plumb. So just some, some things to touch on. So all, all that stuff aside, I'm gonna go over um, now just the software side of things. Before I touch on that though, like Clay was saying, these live events, I think they're a great thing. Uh, this is this event. If you ever want to see past events, you can go right on to the Microvellum website and take a look at all the previous ones that were done. Just like Clay was saying, they're bringing customers here, so you're getting customer testimonials, and, and I think that that's a very powerful thing. Um, so without further ado, I'll jump into the software side of things just to give you an idea of what the 3D Disto software looks like. And uh, I'm in my office right now. And I, I kind of set up my screen in a way so that you can get a visual of the 3D Disto. So up here is a camera and uh, it's, it's taking a look at the 3D Disto and you can see a couple walls in my office. Down here I have a little floor plan of my office. Uh, 3D Disto is right here, so kind of next to these doors that are closed. And then I'm sitting right here, and we're looking, the 3D Disto, this wall right here is this wall right here. So um, I just wanted to, to give you guys a visual of what we're going to be scanning. Now I'm not going to create uh, an extravagant scan today, I'm just going to take a uh, floor plan and I got a question I'm just reading really quick. Solutions. Yeah, so there's a question from Daniel uh, and he's asking about if the software can work with two by four construction um, and if there's, you know, before the installation, before the drywall, absolutely. 
uh, or the, the unit can scan pretty much anything that you see. Uh, right now my office is set up with sheetrock and everything, but when you, when you start to see what's happening in the software, um, you'll get the idea of how it can work in really any environment. So on the left side of my screen, I have the, the Leica software pulled up and the unit, I, I turn the unit on, uh, there's a button that you just click on the top and what the unit does is it goes through a leveling sequence. One of the benefits of using the 3D Disto is it does give you everything in CAD, um, but it also gives you all the information that you get in CAD is, is leveled and plumb. So, so you can make take measurements and account for the floor being out of level or the walls being out of plumb. You can account for that right in the CAD file. So before I get into the, the software side of things, I'll just go over the, the screen. So the 3D Disto is a robotic measurement solution. And what I mean by that is you don't actually have to be standing with the unit to move around. Uh, I'm sitting at my desk. Again, I'm sitting over here. I'm using the software on my computer. And now when I select a point, the Disto is going to automatically move there. Now in the camera, you'll be able to see it move uh, as I move the laser back and forth. And right here, you can see the little laser dot. You don't see it in this screen because it's been canceled out. That's the way they have it work. But wherever this crosshair is, is where the laser point is going to be. So when you're doing studs or you're doing something like that, you just want to make sure that that laser point is on each one of the studs that you want to measure. So that's, uh, that's really the simplicity of it. So just a few things on, this, on the visual side of things. You have the ability to, to move the disto to a particular point. So I can just pick a point and it's going to move there. Or if I want to move it on a drastic level, I can pick and hold in the middle and move it uh, quickly or slowly to the left or to the right um, to get it right in the right spot that I want. And then once I'm in a, a spot that I want to pinpoint on, I would select it and then start scanning. There is auto scanning features with this. There is uh, ability to zoom in and zoom out. You can uh, see where you've taken previous points. Another good question just came in that I'll touch on because we were just talking about two cores. Can it work on metal studs? Um, I have had, I've had instances where it has worked just fine. I've had instances where it hasn't. Uh, and the, the contributing factor is if it's really bright and sunny in the room and also the, um, the sheen or the, the reflectivity of the studs. So a lot of the metal studs that I've been seeing in the last uh, four or five jobs that I've gone out and measured, they've had like a little grid pattern in them. Um, they're like kind of stamped with this, this uh, texture, check, excuse me, texture. And those have been working fine. Um, the ones that are really shiny and smooth, if you have a problem with that, what I use is um, some painter's tape and I'll just put that on there and that, that corrects that issue. So, uh, but for the most part, uh, I'd say 90% of the time with metal studs, I don't have any issues. So um, we can see the previous points, which I don't have any. Uh, there is a camera feature. So if I take a measurement and I wanna take a picture of it, I can just take this and it'll snap a shot and it's basically a screenshot of what we're seeing right now. So if you wanted to note plumbing or if you wanted to note uh, outlet or something, something special or unique that you couldn't really capture in the points, you could capture it with that photo. Uh, and then you can rotate the ditto uh, to certain increments. Um, and these are just some basic things. I'm gonna get into actually the scan. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna make anything that looks pretty like the scans I was showing you, just because of, you know, time is, is precious for everyone. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan basically the perimeter um, of my office and give you an idea of the floor plan. And I'm gonna do some auto scanning to show you, there's, I have a laminate cone, uh, which you can actually see better in this photo or in the video. And I'm gonna do some auto scanning of that so you can see the the radius that's there and um, just to give you an idea of how the software works and then a little bit later 
we'll get into the CAD side of things. So the first thing that you have to do with any scan is you have to take two points on a particular wall. And this, this is just like a, a housekeeping thing. It's nothing, nothing related to um, the unit itself. And it doesn't have to be these, these yellow targets that I'm doing. I, this is just what I like to use because it gives you a visual reference. My wall is orange uh, and that sometimes proves difficult when you're doing this. So the first point I take, you're gonna see now this grid has been established. If I were to look at it from the top down, you know, you can see now the grid is kind of aligned with the disto. When I take the second point, what it's doing is it's establishing the X and Y um, plane. So it, it doesn't matter if you took a point on one wall and the other, it would just make your cat a little crooked and you'd have to do some rotation after the fact. Uh, I just like to find two points on the same wall. And now you can see how my X and Y has been established and I can start to continue to take measurements around the room. Notice before the disto was in line with that point number one, and now the disc is kind of off at an angle. But if you were to look at it from the point of view of the two points that I just took, I put, took a point here and a point here, the disto has now really come into perspective of where it is in relation to the room. Um, the way this works is every point that I take, it captures the X, Y, Z value of that point. So if I were to jump back out and look at this, the first point that I took, you'll notice is a zero, zero, zero in X, Y, and Z. And I don't want to get too technical, but I just, to understand this, I think is helpful. The second point, um, it's now giving me, starting to give me some measurement information. Now the 3D disto, the accuracy on the 3D disto is about a millimeter at 30, or at 10 meters. So it's about a little less than a 16th of an inch at 32 to 33 feet. Um, put it in the center of the room and you got quite a lot of distance that you can, that you can get. So I'm gonna take some points, if you'll notice my cursor on the video, I'm gonna take some points just around the top of the room to come up with this floor plan. And in between each one of these points, the disto is drawing a line automatically. And these lines, they translate right to the, the CAD environment. When I take corners, I actually stay about three inches away to account for any mud that's there. If there were studs on this wall instead, um, I would just be making sure I was hitting a stud instead of uh, you know, dead space. Where you take the point is where your is where that measurement is happening. So, you know, if you take a if you take a point and it's on a screw or it's on a, a point that's maybe held out from the wall a little bit, that's going to, to translate into the file. So I always make sure that I'm capturing a spot that's gonna give me an accurate dimension. And I'll show you why I'm holding it out it's three inches when we look at the file. So we're coming up to the other side of the wall and there's a question that just came in. I'm just gonna finish this corner scan and then I can answer that question. Now I have this disto placed um, in a spot in my office that is the best for the cameras uh, and best you know, to stay out of the way of people coming in and out of my office. In reality, um, if I were to scan and it was an actual job and I needed to get the, the floor plan of the room, I would have set the disto up in the center of the room. So I'm having a little bit of time, you know, moving and maneuvering it around, uh, but that's because I placed it in not the greatest spot. So the question uh, that came in from Brandon was, what devices can you use to interact with the disto? Oh, okay. Good question. So the Disto, um, it is run off of Windows software. Unfortunately, they don't have anything for the iPad or, or um, like Samsung tablets. So you'd have to have a, a Windows tablet or a laptop. I use a Windows Surface tablet and it works quite well. Um, I have some cabinets here that I'm gonna just avoid. If we wanted to, we could capture them, but 
for time's sake, I'm just going to avoid them. The, the, the thing that's really powerful with the distill, and I always, I always think of this for really every project that, that I do, is the projects that you can do with the 3D Disto really, you can do the simplest things or you can do the most complicated things. Um, and the Disto can handle it because it's really about what you need, what's, what's the end result that you need. Uh, and the Disto, you can take more time to, to capture that scan data. Uh, or if you don't need that much data, like what I'm doing right now, you can take less time uh, to capture that scan data. So what we see now is, is really the floor plan unfolding and, and notice where the 3D Disto is now in relation to where the room is. And you'll see in this, in this image that I have of my room layout, it's really put that 3D Disto into perspective of exactly where it is. Um, and now I have basically a bunch of lines uh, that have been created. Every red dot you see is where the measurement took place. Um, and now I can, start to clean this up to, to get that floor plan. So we have the ability in the Leica software, before I even jump out of it into the microvellum environment, I can start to use what they call as CAD features. And in these CAD features, we can join these lines together. So I wanna just create a corner here, and I wanna grab this and do this thing over here. So very similar to what you would do in, in the CAD environment. Maybe takes just a little bit longer. And you don't necessarily have to do this uh, with the software. You can wait and do this with the, uh, you can wait and do this in the microvellum CAD environment later. I tend to, to like to add these so I can get a visual of what things look like. So now I have, um, so now I have this, this floor plan started and I'm going to do that auto scan of this curve so we can see how the auto scanning works and I might auto scan this corner to see what how you would uh, use this for like a countertop situation everything that I've done so far is just me been manually picking each point um, with the auto scanning feature you'll see in a minute how it it selects those points automatically I have another question that came in here Oh, um, I'm just guessing uh, on the three inches from the edge. Jake asked, you know, how do I know that it's really three inches from the edge? It doesn't really matter exactly where it is. Um, you can see how I'm, I'm plus or minus on a lot of these edges. It's it just, I, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, I think uh, typically, you know, the corner, if it's, if it's uh, drywalled, it's got a lot of mud in that corner that's gonna throw my measurements off. So that's why I hold it about three to four inches away. It doesn't, it's not an exact thing. Um, you can see I was still able to gather my corner data, uh, even holding it out that three to four inches away. Um, that's, just, that's just something that I use as a, a baseline. So with the auto scans, um, we have a few things that we can do. We can do a linear scan, which is basically in a line, or we could do a grid scan if we wanted to figure out, you know, if there was a bump or a, a deviation in a wall. I'm going to just do a linear scan for now, and I'm going to do a horizontal one. We can do horizontal, vertical, or sloped, but for right now, the horizontal is going to be the best. One of the things to note with this horizontal scan is um, once you take that first point, and this is really beneficial for like the countertop side of things, um, I'm gonna do it so that it will right close to the top edge and, and this will really illustrate what I'm explaining to you right now. So once I take this first point towards the top edge, what the distro does and what the software does is it actually accounts for the level. So if I say, okay, I wanna just, from that first point, I wanna to scan to the, to the right, it's gonna ask me, okay, what scan increment do you want? And we have a whole bunch of pre-built pre ones in. Um, if you can't find any here, you can go to a custom one. I'm gonna stick with, uh, let's do every one in, every two inches for now. So we'll click okay. 
And what the, what the unit is going to do is it's going to start looking for a second. And it's going to try and figure out where it is in relation to that two inches that I've asked it to do. And notice how it's, it's now kind of going around this rim of this curved laminate that I have because the unit is actually holding that point level. So if I wanted to pause this, um, we can change that interval. So I actually want to go to every one inch so we can see what that looks like. And it's going to go back and now scan now every one inch. But it's holding that level. So if you were scanning for a countertop and the countertop was 36 inches off the floor, you would, um, you would set up at that first point of 36 inches and then you would just hit go and it would keep that consistent 36 inches inches around just like you were holding a just like if you were holding a line level up so once we're to the end i can just hit pause and say okay i want to skip the rest and now we can look and it asked me if i want to edit the scan this is if you were i'm going to say yes just to show you why if you were auto scanning around a room and you missed the corner and you wanted to go back and get it because uh because that interval might have been off a little bit you can go back and hit get the corners and, and make it a little bit more precise but I'll, I'll click OK uh, and then I'm just gonna click this checkbox to say that we're done so now if I look at this from the top we can start to see that the curve of that laminate that's there now I could have scanned it at a much finer increment if I wanted to um, that's really dependent on whatever that project needs you know I've done I've done ones down to a half an inch increment if I needed that accuracy, or this two inch would be totally fine if I wanted to just recreate something that would match that, um, that radius. So the last thing I'll do is I'll just show you uh, maybe what a grid scan would do on the wall and to give you an idea of that. And then from there, I'll, I'll get into the CAD side of things. So I'm going to do a grid scan and it asked me fast or slow for this time. I'll just do fast. And now it asks you to kind of like take a perimeter of what you want. And then it, it'll tell you the grid after that. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to just take some points on the wall. So let me take. Let me say that we'll just kind of do a grid scan where this sign is or where this target is. And I, I'm going to lock it so it's not jumping back to that screen every time. Now, for like an, a use case of this, because sometimes it's hard to extrapolate, um, I've used this on walls that I wanted to find out if they were, if they were blum, but also if there was any bumps or anything like that or deviations in the sheetrock. Um, once I'm all set and ready to go. I'm going to actually click, I'm good on the perimeter. And now it's going to ask me to establish a grid. So I'm going to show you what one inch is going to look like. It's going to be way too much. But what's cool with this is it gives you a preview of what that grid is going to look like. And every white dot that you see is eventually going to become a measurement to tell you how that wall is deviating. Uh, this is a little too too much for me, so I'm going to go to two inches and see what that looks like. That's still too much for what we're doing. And now when I jump, it's going to go to four. I actually want three inches, and it doesn't give me that, so I'm going to go to the question mark and just type in three and click OK. And that's going to give me a pretty good pattern, and I'll click Go. And now the Disto is going to scan um, those white marks and create uh, create that measurement from there. Uh, so you'll notice where it's hitting the orange right now, that's the actual wall, and where it's hitting the gray target plate, it, it's, it's kind of coming out a quarter of an inch. And look at the top up here, you can see how it's telling us that it's coming out three-eighths of an inch or three-thirty seconds of an inch. And after the fact, if I select on any one of these points, it's going to give me that data for this plane where here, these guys uh, were at a 32nd of an inch off of the perimeter and these guys bumping out. So it gives you some idea. And if I wanted to get an idea, like say this was something I wanted to remember, perfect time to take a picture. And then I can say, oh, that, that's what I was scanning and, and, 
and have that for later down the road. So when you're dealing with the scan, and again, like I said, this is not going to be pretty by any means. Uh, it just gave me a floor plan. It gave me this radius. But when we're done, we just save it. And, um, and then we export. So we'll just say this. I just want to show you this process. Gorilla Live. And we'll click OK. Let me do it one time. And then I'll do uh, a file and we'll do the same. Gravel on Live. I did it again. And we'll click OK. And then the last thing that we need to do is export. And I'm showing you this because I like to show you what you're going to get later. So when I hit export, I've selected that file. And this is exactly what you get. So I haven't done anything in between. Uh, here's my microvellum live folder that I just created. This is where it dumps the export. And now it's given you a few different files to choose from. These are the snapshots for what the pictures I took. Uh, there's the first one I took and there's the one after uh, all the points and notice it actually has a point number in there. And then here, are the CAD files. It gives you a DWG file and a few DXF files. Um, and then these text files and CSV files, therefore, um, therefore, if you had a program that you wanted to interact with like the actual XYZ coordinates. There is a, another question from Daniel. Let's take two. Okay, there's a question on how long uh, it would take to, to measure a room my size. And the answer, um, it actually varies. And I'll tell you why. With the 3D Disto, and, and I go over this in all the training that I do and, and with all of the customers that I talk to, but that 3D Disto has the ability to give you a very complex scan or a very simplistic scan. Excuse me. And um, it all depends on what information you need to capture. If I were putting wall paneling in this room, it would probably take, it's gonna take a lot longer to capture the information than if I were just putting a countertop in the corner. If I was just doing a countertop on the wall, um, then I would only need to scan where that countertop is gonna go. But if I'm doing wall paneling, I need to scan all the walls and how they interact. So for a typical countertop scan, uh, I generally figure about 15 to 20 minutes, um, plus or minus. A lot of times I'm in and out in 10. And then for a wall panel scan, sometimes I've, it's been an hour, sometimes it's been a little bit more, depending on the complexities. Um, but now that I've kind of shown you this, I want to show you some, uh, some examples of, of things that I have scanned. And then... Um, and then I'm going to show you the CAD side of things. Uh, Brandon has a question. Yeah, so how to scan a door or a window is, is the question. Um, and I can actually show you that. Should be able to, to visualize it. So the thing with the Disto is everywhere that you, every point that you want to scan, you have to be able to visualize it. So with doors or with windows, um, you just have to be able to see that opening to scan it. So if I wanted to actually, if I wanted to capture where this door was, uh, I would simply just start taking points on this door. And now you'll notice it's just connected it with a line. But now you'll notice point number 50. And when I go up and take point number 51, this door will, will begin to take shape. And I have some examples of some files that have some more information about doors and windows. So I'm just, this is information that is necessary for the particular scan that I'm working on. So now I'm gonna start capturing it. That's really what it boils down to. And I'll just hit this point here and show you that doorway taking shape. And then we'll look at that. So, you know, I've taken three or four points and I've already started to shape out this doorway. If the disto was in the center of the room, I would have been able to, to capture the rest of it. Um, and that's just a that's just something, if I were to walk into this scan knowing that I needed that doorway, then setting the disto up in the center of the room would have been exactly what I did.
So now that we've kind of played with this side of things, I'm going to show you what these, these uh, scan files look like uh, as we go through. So I have a few open in AutoCAD. I have a few open in uh, Microvellum, and I'm going to show you. The first one I want to show you, though, is this. This is um, that hallway uh, that I was showing in the beginning. And I did a, a combination of a few different things here, uh, but this was for wall paneling. And I'm gonna show you the, let me show you some pictures first. I have some pictures of things that needed to be scanned uh, to give you an idea of what was going on. So this, this was the project that I was working on and thankfully it was sheetrocked, but the customer, this was a $40 million penthouse. Uh, you can see it's got a very good view of New York City. And the customer wanted to take all this plain uh, sheetrocked walls and, and do like really high gloss paneling on it. So I set the distro up uh, in the middle or in a couple different spots and you, can, you do have the ability to move it around. And I scanned basically these walls to see how all the joints of the paneling were, were going to interact. Um, this was another scan that I did where if you notice, this, this was a, a welcome center in New York and the customer had to supply this millwork that basically completely encapsulated uh, these beams. So I needed to scan the beams and they're at all the angles and, and give that information to them so that they could do that. Um, and this one, I'll jump back to that in a second. So for the wall paneling scan, this was one of the auxiliary rooms that were kind of to the side. And then that main area was right here. So here's an example of what was exported with that software. So here's, it looks pretty messy. For, forgive the mess, but when you break down that information, um, it's everything that I needed to calculate exactly what was happening with this wall paneling. The only thing that I did in the CAD microvellum environment after it was exported was I color coded some of these things. So this magenta line that you see all the way at the bottom, that was the floor. Uh, this green line was the ceiling. All the blue, uh, darker blue is the walls blues were and then finally the yellows were where the doors were and you'll notice you know when you're looking at this information it looks a little crazy but if I were to look at it from the top and I were to turn off the the floor and the ceiling we're gonna start to get into perspective a little bit of what this scan data is doing and I took photos and these photos they're superimposed into the CAD environment. So I'm just going to turn the photos too because sometimes those get a little nuts. But now I was able to take this and the last thing that I did was I took these lines that were on the bottom and I changed the color to a different color. And now when I look at it from the top I can see that that wall at the bottom is pushing out. And I was able to just basically take get a, a, a view of how this wall was so that I could correctly calculate uh, what needed to happen. So this series of, of views that you see here is me doing that. So this is like my work, my workflow. So this was the scan data and I copied it over and I took into account how things were out of square and out of plumb, and I created this square line to my quote unquote pinch points. That's basically how the installers were gonna have to install it. And then I went to the next point here, and I created that room, and the next point was the room with the windows in it. Um, so this was what I was talking about in the beginning where you kind of have to filter it through. And, and really what, what it boils down to with the 3D Disto, is you're probably not gonna save that much time when you're out in the field taking the measurements. You're, you'll save some, uh, especially when it comes to curve stuff. I mean, there's, there's no way that you can do this kind of curve stuff 
without a lot of cardboard or Luan templating that you then got to carry with you. So you're saving a lot of time when it comes to that kind of stuff. But you might not save that much time when you're doing your, you know, your standard field dimensioning. You're going to save the time on the install. So instead of having guys go with oversized pieces and pieces that are, um, you know, that you got to account for things being out, you're sending them with pieces that are cut exactly to what you need and the install is happening quickly. The first project that I did with the 3D Disto was a countertop and I scanned it all in about the same time that it would take me to normally measure it. But then I, I created the files that needed to be cut and I had, and the, company I was working for cut them all out and I went back and I talked to the installer and I said um, you know how did this compare and he said well I, I had the counters and it was two rooms of like six or seven different countertops and um, and they were all together because it was like a u-shaped room and he said well I installed the counters in about an hour and I said oh really how long does it usually take and he goes oh I don't know I'm the electrician so you know he was able to use the, the scribe information that was cut on the CNC machine and to his advantage because he didn't have any experience. So um, in my estimation, it was about eight to nine hours of time it saved just in the countertop installation. So another example is just the countertop side of things. Uh, this is where you know the Leica software excels greatly uh, and it excels in really everything but countertops are are pretty much as easy as you can get so for this particular one I scan the wall and in the corners you can see I scanned at a higher resolution uh, so it's giving me about every uh, eighth or sorry every uh, half an inch and you can see the mud joints so I took this scan data and I copied it and created walls with the scribes built into them and then when I drew the counters on that um, I was able to create these counters with the scribe built in. And then when I nested it, um, we, I just stuck it right in, in the um, nested program for the microvellum cabinet to happen there too. And I added the two last sheets for the countertop. And I assigned a router to them and there were cutouts that they could get installed as well. So it's pretty much as easy the countertop side of things and then in terms of the wall side of things this was a again that toilet bowl shaped area and if you wanted to add this to microvellum you can just go in to the drawing side of things and under room components we can just select instead of picking points to create the walls we can just select the polylines. Now this, this, these lines, they're all square and true uh, because they're based off the pit points. But, um, but this is where I want, want to build cats of the case. I'd want to build my paneling off of these square and true measurements versus how the, counter or how the uh, room was, was really there. Just going to wait for this to, to fish out. But this is, I mean, it didn't take, it took about maybe like, like three hours to scan. Um, but then I was able to take the data and give it right to the installers. And the installers, when I talked to the gentleman, he said that it just fell into play. There was no issues, there was no problems. Uh, and they were done. So, right from that, from the scan data, I was able to create, you know, the walls to start then importing cabinets and, and all that kind of stuff. So the last thing I wanted to touch on, and then we'll get in here for some questions about how uh, he likes the unit and how he has used it uh, in the microvellum environment, is scanning for like soffit work. So, this particular scan that I did was we were doing paneling here, but you know I've had the question many times: Does this scanner work if you had a soffit curve, a curved soffit that you then had to um, basically create a die-walled 
reception desk to match that curve. And it most certainly does. Um, this, the view that we're looking at right now, I have a 360 degree camera that I use out in the field that helps me just capture exactly what, you know, the vantage point and the viewpoint is. But this was a, a curved mezzanine. And what I ended up doing was I scanned the front of it uh, for paneling, but I just want to show you the example of exactly what you do if we were to put a reception desk under here to match that curve. So this is just what it looks like. And then in AutoCAD, I've done through and sh I can show you what that looks like in the AutoCAD environment. So here's, an, or here's the scan that I have. So I actually measured a few points off of that curve and the railing itself because we were doing the railing. And all I did below is I just isolated this bottom part, which if we were looking at that photo again, is just right in this area. Hopefully I'm not jumping too fast, but I'm getting low on time here and I wanna make sure I cover everything. So from that scan data, I just copied down that bottom information. And this was a true story in this particular project. Oh, okay. Um, just making sure everybody can see me. So this was a true story. Um, we, I scan this. See the blue, the, the lighter blue? That's a true radius. And this is what I scanned. The guys who, who framed this framed it off of the steel workers like cardboard scans. It was totally off. And what we ended up having to do for our paneling was after I scanned this, we created a true radius and basically just attached it on with a lot of cleating um, to make it look good because it looked really awful. So, um, but this is what the 3D Disto does. It gives you a picture of what the real world is doing. Uh, so I just superimposed some, some radiuses on top of this for this example. Um, but that was a true situation in terms of coming up with, hey, these aren't even close to being right. So what I did was isolated what I wanted for the reception desk that, that's matching uh, the curve of that soffit. And then I'll show you how simple it is to uh, to bring that into the microvellum environment and make that reception desk happen. So I all I did was I copied that um, I copied that geometry from that scan work working file and I brought it into the microvellum environment and this is the solid modeling tools for the extruded product builder and I can just say die wall example. And then after this, I'm gonna talk with Zach. Uh, so all I'm doing is grabbing that construction line and I'm gonna grab and Clay says that my screen is a little laggy, so probably because I got a lot of stuff open. And I'm gonna grab what I want to put on there and this is why I like the Disto, because it's able to capture that information, but it's also why I like Microvellum, because I'm able to just take that information and what would have taken me hours and hours and hours to do, um, now I can do very quickly. And it's matched that scan, you know, it's matched the real life situation and, and we can see it right here. So. Um, now I'm going to just take some time and, and chat with Zach. Uh, Clay says my screen's laggy anyways. Hopefully my audio is pretty good. Um, but Zach was one of my uh, first customers with the 3D disc. And um, he's been using it now for, I think, going on three or four years. And... And so far, so good, I think. So I, I will ask him and see, see what he thinks about it. So, so Zach, just so everybody can kind of get an idea of what you do and, and how you do things, um, what's, what's something that you would typically build? What does your company try to... 
here here recently we've been uh had a huge focus in the hospitality industry so we do a lot of hotel work um everything from you know five star resorts down to these like holiday inn expresses or whatever um we're not typically doing guest rooms although we do sometimes uh, most of our work is the front of house stuff and uh and common area products so it can be it, it can get extremely complex uh, there's a lot of times that we're using the uh disto to to shoot clouds and uh and create reception desk or registration desk underneath them or we're uh making millwork that goes around columns or um doing complex bar assemblies uh particularly out of stonework that we don't want to have to do any trimming when we get in the field so we'll use it to capture those points and um and then it goes straight into microvellum and and we can do all of our engineering from there and how long how long have you been using microvellum um we've had microvellum since i guess it was when version 7 first came out so i don't know how long that's been probably seven or eight years or something yeah and then yeah, we've been using the disto for four years now yep have you seen uh, you know a benefit with using the 3d disto and microvellum um yeah you? because it's um because the format that the disto is using is a uh a dxf format which is a native for microvellum because of autocad and then um, with it all being, you know, in that AutoCAD environment, you're not having to export and import into something else. So I think the uh, the information is very clean like that. And about how often would you say you're using the 3D Disto? Weekly. Really? Wow. Um, have you found that accuracy has been pretty, pretty spot on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the accuracy. So um, the accuracy of the instrument is is better than you know than what you can manufacture. So if anything, what we found is in the beginning we were trying to get way more information than we needed, and it was just confusing whenever you got it back in the office. So now we probably are we get a lot less information. Um, than we were in the beginning, you know, like, like you were saying, if we go into a room and all we're doing is putting in a few countertops, if it's just some straight tops, we might not use the disto at all. We may just use a laser tape, but if it's a, if it's stone countertops that we don't want to have to trim on, we would use the disto because of the time savings in installation, or if it's something going, you know, in a radius or, or another place we found that is helpful is, like if you have an elevation of cabinet, say in a break room or something, we can go in and capture where the pipes are and the receptacles and all that and overlay that information right on top of our uh, elevation view in microvellum. And it tells us if we've got a conflict with maybe plugs falling out where bulkheads are in cabinets and we can be proactive about telling the contractor, hey, look, this one right here, you need to move six inches to the right so then you need to move three inches to the left and it when we get there to install our installers aren't waiting on that stuff to happen then yeah yeah no that's cool that's cool i i had something similar like that i actually found a wall that was out of way out and i told the c contractor and he was like yeah you're right it is way out i thought i made the mistake but it turns out that the wall was was out that's no that's good to hear I, so You'd say overall the the combination of the three D disto with microvellum has that has definitely been a benefit to you. Oh yeah, made major win. Yes. Nice, nice. If you if you, yeah, I'm sure you'd probably be sad if you lost it tomorrow, kind of a thing. Because we would be. I, yeah, it would be a it would be a a big hit for us. When we first got the disto, we were in the middle of a wall paneling project that we had measured the old way completely manually and we had 3d modeled this entire it was a, a, a two-story uh, lobby with mezzanine that had panels downstairs on the face of the mezzanine and upstairs and then there was a bunch of windows integrated where there were lines that had to 
reveals in the panels that had to line up with windows upstairs and downstairs. And we thought that we had it work out perfect manually. And when we got the disto, we went back and remeasured everything. And what we discovered was there was things that were not aligning anywhere near the way they were supposed to because you just can't, you cannot manually measure the relations between things. You know, you can't do it. You can tell how far apart things are, but you can't tell if, if something on one end of the room is in plane with something on the other end of the room. Uh, you, mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. wow. So it That's saved cool. us probably just in material on that job. That was like $50,000 of veneer on it. And that would have all been garbage if we would have built the product as we had originally measured it because we had no way of determining how things were really out of whack there. And uh, and once we figured all that out with the Disto, we were able to make adjustments and, you know, make things line up the way it was supposed to. And it, I mean, it turned out beautifully. So it well, paid for itself right out of the gate. That's awesome. That's, that's very cool. All right. I, at all the trade shows that I've I bumped into you, that's that story never popped out. So that's really cool. That makes me excited. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a big win for us, and um, that's, and now we use it all the time. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And it's something that you've you know you trust. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I mean it's yeah. just like your CNC equipment. It does exactly what you tell it to, and um, the disc does the same way. You know, I mean if you if you measure bad points you're going to get bad information, but so you do need to do a little bit of planning when you, when you start, you know, measuring a room or a project, but yeah. um, with really good planning and kind of understanding what information you really need to capture, uh, you can, you can do it in a reasonable amount of time and get really get information that is, that is 100% accurate. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat and to talk and um that's an awesome story that really is that yeah no that's problem one of the reasons why i started i gravitated towards this tool and i started telling people about it because it's just it's cool those stories like well, um I, I've, I've heard a lot of them but well uh, it really works that's for sure that's great that's great well thank you very much um that's pretty much all I have. Uh, if anybody has any questions uh, or anything, I can address those now. Um, I'm pretty much right up to the hour. Uh, and hopefully this has made sense to people. Hopefully this is something that uh, you can see how you could benefit uh, from it. And really the, the thing that I kind of go back to and the, the reason why I like microfilm as much as I do is the fact that you're in an environment, you're in that CAD environment. Microfilm is running the AutoCAD environment and it is a seamless integration. So there's other softwares that, you know, are, are coming on board with the integration when it comes to the 3D Disto. Um, and they're, you know, saying, hey, we got, we're, we're starting to get this integration, but the way it works is very clunky from what I've experienced. Um, and you know, microvelm has been integrated all along because it's got that D DWG that you can open right up and start using. So it's one of those things that there's not really a learning curve on the software integration side of things when you're using it with microvelm. So I, I, I've had nothing but good, uh, good feedback and good results when it comes to that. So I, do want to thank Clay for giving me the opportunity to um, present today. And I really truly hope this is something that people can walk away and feel like benefited. Yeah. Thank you uh, um, too, Adam. I think there was a lot of great information. Um, I think we went actually deeper than I thought, which is great. I think it provided a lot of uh, insight for those that are considering this type of technology for their business. Um, and it was great hearing from you too, Zach, uh, some of those experiences that you had with the, the tool. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of great information that we covered. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the, uh, the 3D Disto laser, be sure to indicate that on the performance poll that you guys see right now and that popped up on your screen. And Adam will definitely follow up with you. Um, and as always, if you wanted to 
learn more about uh, our software. Maybe you're an existing customer looking at an upgrade or maybe Microvellum is new to you and you're, you want to experience what we, uh, we have and how we can benefit your company. Uh, be sure to let us know and we'll follow up as well. All right, as I mentioned at the uh, top of the hour here when we first started, uh, we are in what we're calling our second season here, our fall season uh, of our Microvellum live schedule. And you'll find a listing of the upcoming episodes that we have on our website. Uh, you can go to microvellum.com and check out our events page, or you can uh, go to our live page as well. So microvellum.com forward slash live. Right now, there is a link for our next episode that's coming up next week. And on the schedule for next week, we are going to be reviewing, um, actually, we've invited back our top techs uh, and developers here uh, operating out of our headquarters. And we're going to be looking at uh, covering a Microbelm live Q&A episode. And I love these type of episodes. They're really fast paced. We cover a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, and we're going to be covering... Um, well, to start off, we're going to look at some of the new grass hardware that was found in our latest shipping library. Um, Lenny Sienna is here to help us with that. Uh, we'll be here next week for that. Uh, we're also going to have a look at the new uh, AutoNest label placement algorithm. This is brand new um, our additions to the, our auto um, nest labeling connectivity. We're going to look at the new tools that we have that uh, are calculating the center of gravity for parts. So if you're working with machines, CNC machines that are working with robots to pick parts off, off of the, of the table after they're finished, that is uh, something that's a benefit there. As well as the new detection of machining and part collision. So we never want to pl place one of those labels where there's machining or perhaps in between two parts. So we've got a lot of new tools that help uh, help you with those uh, that connectivity with machines equipped with that feature. So definitely if you have one of those machines or looking at it, I suggest you be sure to register uh, for that upcoming event. Uh, we're also going to look at the new 2D part editor. This is something that we've covered in the past a few times, um, but it is back on our schedule by popular demand. So Shane's going to be here to help us uh, with an understanding of that and how it works. And of course, we're going to be taking your questions live. So be sure to come prepared with those questions next week and our team will be here to help. Um, you can register for that upcoming uh, live event, like I mentioned, at microbellum.com forward slash live. That registration is open. And you can check out some of the other ones that we have coming up. We've actually got a few customers that are going to be featured just like we had uh, these network. Um, so yeah, again, I definitely thank you for being here today. Well, that will about do it for today. Um, and we will see you uh, next week on our next Microbellum Live episode. <laughs>